Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some historical romance recommendations for you that are standalones. A lot of the time when you read a historical romance it is a part of a series. Okay, and I feel like a lot of people can attest to this, just like me. Um, I want to read all the books in the series to get to the one I want to read the most. So if book number five, that plot, appeals to me so much, I have to read all the way from book one to get to book five because that's just how I read series. So in order to avoid that, I have romance books that are complete standalones. They are not a part of a series. You do not really need to read them in order. And yeah, even on Goodreads, I checked all of them, made sure that they're not a part of a series. And so if you just want to read a historical standalone, you can read one of these bad boys. So the first one that I have is right on top here. This is For My Lady's Kiss by Linda Needham. This is about McKenna Hughes and she and her village get a new lord of the land. Um, they haven't had a lord in a while, um, but a new one shows up and she's not happy about it. She ends up doing a bunch of schemes and pranking him and like doing a bunch of naughty things in order to save her and her very small village that she cares very deeply for. This hero is so sick of her. He's sick of her doing all of these schemes and ruining his plans, but he can't help but be totally, totally into her. <laughs> so he decides to kidnap her and make her his hostage in his new castle as a lord. <laughs> That starts their enemies to lovers whirlwind romance and oh my gosh this one was so addicting to read. The heroine was hilarious. The hero kidnaps her. That just adds another fun element to the story. <laughs> I've like mentioned this before but this book has one of the most iconic scenes for me. Um, The heroine has escaped from him multiple times when she is kidnapped by him and so he wants to keep an eye on her and be as close to her as possible so she does not run away. So when they're going to bed he makes her strip everything gone, tosses her a nightgown, out of the window. They're on like the third, fourth story. Tosses it out of the window so she is has no clothes on. He does this so that she doesn't want to run away because she doesn't want to go running in front of all the people with no clothes on. And then he makes her braid her hair in a braid and then sleep next to him while he is holding the braid in his fist while he sleeps. <laughs> that is how serious this dude is about making sure she does not run away. Um, and so through this kidnapping situation, he ends up falling for this very chaotic woman. <laughs> This one was so entertaining. I could not get enough of it. There are trigger warnings in here that I'll mention. Uh, discussion of miscarriage, familial death, a hanging and kidnapping. So I just love this one so much. And it is a complete standalone. You don't need to read anything else to read this one. Next, I have a Kindle Unlimited one. And this is on the shorter side. If you would like to pick it up, this is The Chasing of Eleanor Vane by Sierra Simone. Eleanor is our heroine of the story and she has been arranged to marry this kind of frat boy loser. <laughs> If you can call him that is it in this historical setting. But she has to marry him. Her, her family arranged this marriage and she is like goody two shoes and she's sick of being so good all the time. She's sick of it. She's sick of these expectations her family's put on her. And so during one of the engagement dinners, she ends up meeting her betrothed uncle, Ajax, and she is utterly besotted by him. It's like cannot take her eyes off of him. He cannot take his eyes off of her, but they both know that they cannot have each other because she is engaged to his nephew. But then Eleanor decides that she's had enough. She's sick of being the good girl and decides to run away from her wedding in the dark night while it's raining on the Scottish Moors. And Ajax goes to find her and then brings her to a cabin on the estate and they have a grand old time together. <laughs> if you just want a short age gap historical romance to pick up, I really recommend this one. It's a plus that it's on KU. You don't need to read anything else to pick this one up. Next, I have a uh, book number one in the Vault Collection by Maya Banks. I believe every single book in this collection is standalone. I've only read the first one though. This is Duchess of My Heart. So this is the romance between Jillian and Justin. And at the beginning of this book, Jillian finds out that her very abusive husband has died and she is so relieved, so happy. She is out of his clutches. And so she decides to go back out into society because her abusive husband never let her go into society. So she got, decides to go to balls and parties, but she's supposed to be in mourning. There are certain, certain rules out there in British society um, back in the olden days <laughs> that if a loved one, a spouse, a brother, a family member died, you had to be in a certain time of mourning where you like wear black for a year and then you wear like a little bit of lighter colors for another year and you're not allowed to like marry or dance with other people for a certain amount of time too if it's a husband. Um, so there's certain rules in place on if a husband dies. Jillian throws all those rules out the window. She's like, that man 
means nothing to me. I am not going to mourn him at all. I don't mourn him. He ruined my life. And so she decides to go to all these balls and parties right after her husband dies and these elaborate giant bright gowns and everything. And so she kind of stirs up a scandal in the ton. People are very scandalized to be around her. Her best friend is Case who ended up saving her from certain situations with her husband. Case's brother is Justin. And he has learned that Case is kind of roped into this scandalous woman's life. And um, he's like, enough is enough. I'm not letting my brother get roped into anything with a scandal. So he goes to basically confront Jillian to tell her to leave his brother alone. But she just won't have it. She's like, Case is my family. Case is my best friend. That's not happening. The two of them are very interested in each other, very intrigued by the other person, find the other person very attractive. Um, but there is a lot of banter and like yelling at each other going on. Very enemies to lovers but this one is a complete standalone even though it is a part of a series all the books in the series have nothing to do with one another they're just a part of the vault collection so kind of stories that Maya Banks wrote that she never anticipated on publishing but decided to anyway next I have two books by Lucy Morris they are two books by her but they have nothing to do with each other they are completely standalone from each other and all of her other books so the first one is her debut book which is the viking chiefs marriage alliance don't let the harlequin sticker deter you either there are some people that are deterred by the harlequin sticker don't let it because these books are so good if you want good viking romances you have to pick these up okay um so this one is about our heroine who is also a widow. She was married to a very abusive Jarl, which a Jarl is kind of like a Viking, like ruler, Viking king. And she decides to get the heck out of Dodge. She does not want to be in that village anymore around all those people. So she decides to leave on a long boat with all of her possessions, but then the boat ends up crashing. And the hero in here, uh, Thor, he ends up saving her and a bunch of other people from the boat. And because of or certain reasons, the two of them have to get married. The heroine is not happy about this because she swore that she would never get married again and never be under the thumb of a man again because of what she experienced with her husband. And the hero is not very happy that she, he has to marry this woman because he thinks that she is this brat and spoiled when she's, she's not. But that's what he assumes at first. And first impressions are mean a lot to him, I guess. So um, the two of them are not very happy about their marriage situation, but they, they have to get married. And the two of them learn more about each other when they get married and realizes things are not always what they appear on the outside. And I really enjoyed this one. If you want a good Viking romance, you gotta pick this one up. And this one too. This is A Nun for the Viking Warrior. This is the unlikely opposite to track romance between Amy and Jorund. Jorund. <laughs> Amy is a woman who's about to take her vows to become a nun, but I think like the night before, um, who comes busting in the abbey doors, but Jorund and his men. Jorund claims that he has been tasked by the king to marry Amy because she is the daughter to this very powerful man. And Amy is not very happy. She is kind of scared of men and wasn't anticipated on a marrying one. And so they have to get married and have to deal with kind of like the awkwardness of marrying someone you don't know at first and oh this is just done so beautifully well I just love this one the hero is a giant big Viking who falls head over heels for this woman who's a nun and oh my gosh the the first kiss scene is everything to me it's one of my favorite first kiss scenes ever because she's never been kissed and he like teaches her how to kiss and swoon worthy so swoon worthy <laughs> next i have another novella this is the scandalous dissolute no good mr right by tessa dare this one is a complete standalone but it is a novella so it's not a full length book but this tiny little novella packs a giant punch it is so good this is about harry and eliza and they end up bumping into each other at balls all of the time. They have this bantering relationship and Eliza has three older sisters back in the olden days. <laughs> um, younger women, if they had older sisters, they couldn't get married until their sisters were married. And so Harry is totally obsessed with Eliza. And every time he bumps into her, he's like, so, so entranced by her. Um, but he cannot offer her hand, offer for her hand or marry her or anything like that until her sisters get married. And so this book kind of like takes place in like time jumps where like, they bump into each other every year at a certain ball and they're just so funny with each other. I really love this one. This is a great short little Tessa Dare read. Next I have Suddenly You by Lisa Kleypas. This was the first Lisa Kleypas book I ever read so it's been a while but I do remember really enjoying this one. Amanda here is a lady in society and she's about to turn 30 and has never been with a man before and she is sick of it. She's like as like a birthday gift to myself I want to be with a man and so she comes in contact with 
a certain someone in order to hire a man to do just that, to give her a wonderful night. The night when he's supposed to show up, she opens the door, a man is there. So she immediately assumes that that is this guy. They have a certain time together. Uh, and uh, she is shocked when she realizes that is not the man <laughs> that was set up to be with her. His name is Jack and that's all I'm gonna say, but it's kind of like a mistaken identity situation that leads to hilarity and it is so so good. I really enjoyed this one, but this is like one of the only Lisa Claypas books I know that is completely standalone. You don't have to read any of her other books to get to this one, even though I love all of her other books. I do like how she does have a standalone for you to read if you want to. I have another Kindle Unlimited read. This is Meet Me at the Anvil by Kate Pryor. Diane is set to marry this man she has like no passion for. Instead, she holds that passion for that man's best friend and his best man at the wedding. Diane also has like a fainting condition that people make fun of her for. She ends up like fainting out of nowhere. So I really related to Diane. And so she has one of her fainting spells during the wedding ceremony. And this groom is just making fun of her. And she is like, I cannot marry this man. He is making fun of me. I don't care what my family says, I cannot marry him. So what does she do? she becomes a runaway bride. She runs away from her wedding. And so the best man, the groomsman, runs after her to join her on her trek to get away from this situation. In the meantime, he's trying to reveal his feelings that he's had for this one this entire time. <laughs> this is a really cute, short, historical novella. I really recommend it if you want a good historical palette cleanser. And this cover just like is everything. I adore it. The last two books I want to mention are Holiday Christmas reads that are completely standalone. First is How the Duke Saved Christmas by Anna Harrington. This is one of my favorite Christmas romances. I adore this. I read this one last year and was thoroughly obsessed with it. I kept pushing it off, like not reading it because I didn't want it to end. It was so good. This is the romance between Clara and Michael and this is kind of their second chance romance. The two of them were very much in love and I believe were engaged in secret. Then Clara and her family end up experiencing a carriage accident that leaves Clara with the inability to walk. Clara is absolutely devastated and believes that she can never be a good enough wife for Michael now. She's not able to walk. She can't be a good duchess. She can't run a household. So she decides to cut things off with him to save him from her. She believes she's a burden. Michael, however, doesn't know the real reason why she cut things off with him. He's thought all this time that she blames him for the accident. And so he is in total like devastation, feels so guilty when in actuality, Clara just doesn't feel like she's worthy enough for him. So it's Christmas time, I believe a year or two after this incident and Clara and her brother have nowhere to stay during the holidays and there's like a snowed in situation and her, their carriage can't go back home. And the closest place is Michael's home and Clara kind of has to bite the bullet and put up with being around him, even though she does not want to give in to temptation. And Michael's like, enough is enough. I need this woman. The woman is the, this woman is the love of my life. I cannot let her go and he will try anything and everything to make Clara his. I love Michael with my whole heart and chest. He is everything. He is like a total book boyfriend. The way he showed this woman how much he loves her and has not stopped loving her in all these years. I am obsessed with him. You need to pick this one up, please. I don't really mind reading Christmas romances, not during the Christmas season. I don't really mind. But if you are one of those people, be sure to put this one and the next one down on a list to read next December. And so the last one that I have to mention is another Tessa Dare. This is When She Was Naughty. This is such a fun romance. I really enjoyed this. This is the romance between Chloe and Justin. And they don't really get along, or at least Chloe doesn't think so. Chloe thinks that Justin doesn't like her and they have this like animosity relationship. And so Chloe's parents end up inviting Justin to their annual like Christmas ball and Chloe decides to kind of like play a little trick on him. She tells him that's like an ugly Christmas sweater or ugly waistcoat party. And so he shows up to the party fully like believing that it's an ugly waistcoat party in this ugly waistcoat. <laughs> And Justin is totally embarrassed when he walks in and realizes he's the only one in this ugly waistcoat. And Chloe starts to realize like, oh, does Justin actually like, like me? And like, that's what our whole relationship has been like. He's just awkward and doesn't know how to like talk to me and everything. And so this is kind of like Justin revealing his feelings for Chloe and oh, this was so cute. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 historical romances that are complete standalones. You can read them without reading any other books. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me um, any clothing item emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.